Great Railroad Strike of 1877. Uh, this is part of um, the series that I'm going to be doing where I'm going to be talking about some uh, a strike uh, that we have seen a, in the in the last 100 to 200 years um, that uh, that whether it helped the working class or it didn't help the working class, that there is something that we can learn from it. Um, so far, we've talked about the uh, I, I know I keep mentioning it, but I'm mentioning it just in case there's some new people that keep keep popping into the live stream and sticking around. Uh, 1919 Seattle General Strike. Uh, 1919 Winnipeg General Strike and the uh, 1934 uh, San Francisco General Strike is what we've covered. We've also talked about what it takes to make a general strike. Uh, we've talked about the current strikes and walk-offs that are taking place right now, um, as well as the GE protests to make ventilators uh, instead of jet engines uh, when nobody is fucking flying. So um, in that regard i wanted to continue talking about some of the bigger strikes that we have seen some of the important strikes and some of the not so important strikes strikes that we might not even know happened and i for one did not know that this strike happened and and uh, and this kind of has um some of the same elements some of the similar elements uh and um, and that's sort of my hope with this is by talking about these strikes we can see some of these elements um uh you know that historically take place so um when we when we support the strikers of Whole Foods and Amazon and McDonald's and the Pittsburgh Sanitation Department, um, we can see how how the opposition is fighting back. We can learn some of their tactics. So when we see it, we recognize it and we know how how not to react to it because we know that uh, we know what it is. Um, so uh, the Great Railroad Strike of 1877 uh, was in Baltimore. That, that was sort of the epicenter of it um, but, uh, in Camden Yards. And over 100,000 workers were involved. A, over 100,000 workers were involved, right? And um, the reason why this is so monumental is because, first of all, the railroad was the first nationalized industry in America. Uh, and uh, at that point in, in the, uh, the late 1800s, uh, John Garrick, who is a very wealthy businessman, uh, was the president of the railroads, uh, B&O. I think he owned uh, B&O for, for, for some Monopoly fans out there. Um, and he was described as a visionary, right? I feel like all rich people are kind of described as visionary, right? Like, I feel like at one point somebody even looked at Jeff Bezos and was like, boy, that guy's a visionary on how to bring slavery back to the working class. I mean, that guy is a real <laughs> fucking visionary. <laughs> Uh, but, but John Garrick believed that the, the, uh, railroads were the future. Uh, and, uh, boy, howdy, uh, he kind of, uh, was proved wrong in America, huh? <laughs> it's just like the railroads are super not around. <laughs> like we don't have high speed rails. It's like, go to Europe with that shit, Garrick. You know, you gotta, don't bring that railroad bullshit into America. Okay. We're. We're going to invent uh, big old flying machines over here, baby. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> so uh, all this sort of stuff starts in 1873, four years before the strike actually happened. Um, in 1873, there was a depression, and uh, Garrick had to cut the salary of the workers, uh, but none of the executives got their salaries cut. So um, workers lost a bunch of their salary, the executives were fine. Um, and then again, in 1877, four years later, he cut the salary of the worker by 10% again, because the depression wasn't getting any better, right? So he decided to cut the salary of the worker by 10%. He got together with all of his executives, with all his board, with all these people. Again, closed door meetings. None of the stuff was public. Nobody really knew about this sort of stuff, right? Um, got together with them. And he was like, we're going to cut the salaries by 10%. Um, and uh, uh, he, he canceled all of the other meetings for the summer of 1877 because uh, John Garrick believed that the working class, that the employees of the railroad would be so excited about this pay cut because it would be benefiting Garrick and the executives and the company itself that they canceled all of the other meetings that they would have in regards to how to bet better the company, 
right? They like he literally was just like, people are gonna be so excited that we are going to get richer in a depression. You have no idea. People love us, okay? People love us. They they love rich people. Uh, and boy howdy, was he super fucking wrong because people went to get their paychecks. They found out that their pay had been cut by ten percent. And they were fucking pissed. They were pissed, obviously, right? Like, has anybody been like, you know, I think I'm making too much money. Um, I have never uh, said that because I've never made what could be amounted to too much money uh, because I've been poor most of my life. Uh, so <laughs> I've never, I've never, like, I've never had to fucking say that before in my life. <laughs> so in Baltimore... In the Camden Yards, they launched a strike. And they were like, no more. Fuck this shit. We're done. We're striking. Um, and then it, it caught fire, right? Like, everybody was doing it. Chicago, uh, Pittsburgh, Frostburg, West Virginia. Like, all of these places started striking too, right? And it became like this um, railroad industry general strike is essentially what it was, right? There's very specific um, general strikes. So then the militias got involved, right? Because a lot of these strikers, um, this this just wasn't about the railroad industry in and of itself. It was it was about the families because their pay was dependent. You know, like the, these guys were usually it was a single this day. You know, late eighteen hundred. So I, like not a you know women weren't really working. Um, so it was a lot of a uh, lot of like uh, uh, single paycheck families. Um, losing their their means of sustaining themselves and all this other thing. So, uh, and then a lot of their f uh, family members of the strikers were in the militias that had formed um, after the Civil War, and so uh, so the militias were also involved in these strikes themselves. Um, and the militias got disbanded; their their uh, legitimacy got taken away from them for for fraternizing with strikers. This is another thing of just like, if you, it, uh, I wouldn't even have a beer with that. That guy doesn't seem like you can have a beer. You know what I mean? Like you've, you've heard that argument before. Like, I don't like Julian Assange because I can't have a beer with him. I can't see myself having a beer with him. You know, it, and, and this, this one is like the militia people were having beer, beers with the strikers. And they were like, no, <laughs> somebody you can have a beer with. How fucking dare you? Uh, so President Rutherford B. Hayes, um, in order to kind of uh, push back against the strikers, uh, sent the army to shut the strikes down. That's what he did. Um, because the militia was taking their side, they were marching, uh, and, you know, the army would show up and they would be like, what the fuck is this? And Rutherford B. Hayes went as far as to set up Gatling guns in Baltimore. He set up Gatling guns, and the and the and the company that was making these Gatling guns uh, literally penned a letter apologizing to the president, being like, "Hey, uh, super sorry, our bad. We can't make Gatling guns fast enough." Um, sounds like the people in the Gatling gun factory need to unionize, huh? Um, you know, to to ask for better working conditions to make Gatling guns to kill other strikers. Uh, maybe they should have gotten together and organized a strike in the Gatling gun industry to not make Gatling guns to kill other strikers. That could have been a demand. <laughs> we'll just, we'll make you guns, but only if you're not going to use it on strikers. That could have been a fun demand. So uh, because, because the government essentially like, panicked and this and this is sort of the, the the trend that you always see when, when when these movements show up is that the the powers that be the people the people up in the in the realms of power uh freak the fuck out they lose their shit and they um they they immediately turn to like violence right they're like we got to get the military involved we got to get the police involved we're we're deputizing children how many kids can carry rifles? Give them all rifles. We we gotta. Uh, wh who else? Uh, dogs? Can we get, can we put uh, guns inside the mouth of a dog uh, and just have it kind of throw the gun at these strikers? What? Who can we deputize? We gotta make sure that we are still in power. <laughs> they like freak the fuck out, um, and then the strikers will 
you know, it, eventually there, there was less violence involved in these strikes. But in 1877, the strikers decided to retaliate, right? Like they were putting Gatling guns in Baltimore. Um, and so in order to kind of make sure that these militias weren't getting disbanded, weren't getting delegitimized and everything like that, uh, what they would do is uh, they would send um, militias from one side of the state to the other, like they would trade uh, uh, spots. Uh, so Philadelphia's militia would be in Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh's militia would be in Philadelphia uh, so that like the authorities didn't know that these were militia people, right? They would just think that they were other strikers or whatever. Uh, and the strikers and the militias who were all uh, either... Uh, veterans of the Civil War or, you know, they, they were somehow connected to the Civil War. They knew military tactics fought back against this, um, against the army uh, that was being sent to to stop them from just peacefully assembling, right? And, like, they weren't being violent anyway. So now that there was this threat of violence, uh, the strikers decided to burn some shit down. They burned rail yards down. They burned bridges down. They burned these factories down, right? Because that's because they were afraid that they were going to have, they were going to be killed. So they retaliated. Um, and, uh, and Hayes continued to bring more troops. He went to Fort McHenry, uh, and, uh, and on the behalf of the BNO brought out, uh, the American military, uh, to try to kill strikers. And this was a um, a problem because it went back against his promise of reconstruction, which is that troops would not be uh, released and used against civilians in the South. And here he is releasing troops to go to Baltimore. Again, he's already he's already got troops out in Baltimore. He's got Gatling guns in Baltimore. He's putting out more uh, troops from Fort McHenry that are going to Baltimore, which is technically below the Mason-Dixon line. So he's going back on his word. Um, just to make sure, just to make sure that we the people don't get organized, that we the people don't uh, seize the means of our own production, that we don't gain some level of power, right? That we don't get the rights that we we should be getting. Just so we don't get that. So eventually, you know... Um, as things kind of escalated, a uh, bunch of shit blew up, a bunch of shit burned down. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of violence. Uh, eventually, it was like, we got to stop. You know, this is getting over the top. Uh, there was the first national labor le- legislation that got signed because of the Great Railroad Strike of 1877. And it was called the National Railway Labor Act. Um, and had it not been... Because had it not um, been because of the strike of 1877, there were other railroad strikes um, throughout the rest of the 1800s, uh, throughout the rest of the the 20 some odd years that were left of the uh, 1800s there. Um, had it not been for this initial one, this wouldn't have happened. They would they would not have gotten um, they would not have gotten this this national labor legislation done. And And really what it came down to is that these workers were willing to sacrifice themselves. They were willing to sacrifice um, a lot of shit in order to, um, in order to get what they needed to get in order to be treated properly, in order to be, to, to be compensated properly in order to fight for their human rights. Um, and that's really what it takes. And we saw that in the, in the 1934 uh, uh, general strike of San Francisco um, that, that the strikers weren't going to let up. Um, and, and that was another example where, uh, there was a lot of police brutality. The, the army and the national guard were called, uh, uh, two, two people died, uh, like 70 people were, were injured, you know, and, uh, um, but they got what they needed to get. They got the Wagner act in place. They got, they, they were, they were able to get a 12% wage increase. They were able to, uh, get away from having to bribe um, uh, shipyard bosses and things of that sort. They they were able to get what they needed to get. So if we stick with these strikes, if we stand in solidarity um, with each other, then there's a very, very good likelihood that despite the tactics of violence, despite the tactics of um, media manipulation and propaganda and lies being spread around, 
of, 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 you know, communism and all this other shit, um, which, you know, the unions are not communists uh, and, and socialism isn't communism. And the, those are all sort of the propaganda things that get thrown out there. Despite all of that, if we stand together, if we stand in solidarity, we can get what we need to get. We will be treated fairly. We will be treated uh, the right way and we will win. We will win. Um, and that's that's what all these uh, these these strikes from from the last you know two hundred years show is we need to stand together we need to stand in solidarity with each other uh, so once again I, I I hope that that's what you'll do um, because if if I may steal a quote from um, the 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 leader of uh, the airline labor union um, the strike is the tactic solidarity is our power. Uh, so I hope that you t- you take that with you going forward because we are going to see some strikes and the media is not going to cover it. So it's going to be it's going to be more like independent people and fucking comedians that talk about this shit. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay-what-you-want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do, and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.